Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Ferkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there. Here we are, episode three. Going to talk about some air separators today. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. So the question is, why do hydronic systems need air separators? Well, you know, I mean, air is, it's important to get air out of a closed loop system. I mean, the, the reduction of air is going to eliminate the ability for corrosion to to grow in the system. Yeah, eliminate corrosion, provide better heat transfer, less noise, less noise, right? Yeah, so it all it's all relative com- to comfort. Yeah, yeah. So we, we last week we talked about air vents, Greg. What's the major difference between a separator and an air vent? That's a good question because they are commonly the terminology is misused a lot. I feel it like is. We'll get somebody to calls in and says, "Yeah, I got an air vent," or. I had a guy calling an air vent and air separator a lot. Right. And then I had to kind of reel them in and say, look, this is the difference between the two. But to kind of add to that, you can't confuse the two. You just, they're, they're, they're different. They, they do the same thing where they, they remove air from a system. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, air removal, whether it's an air vent or air separator, air removal is why they're in the system. You know, but we talked about the air vents last week being located at a high point in the system to remove air that migrates into them. Right. You know, an air separator is a different device. That's an inline device that it's a pass through device. Right. So an air vent, it has a single connection on the bottom, at the bottom of the canister, at the bottom of the body, and it allows air to, to come up through the float assembly and go out. The vent, right, where the vent cap is. Yeah, and that well, I mean, the air separator is going to have that similar feature built onto the top of it, right? But now it's installed in line, and it's a pass through unit, right? It's a pass through device with two connection points. So with the added air vent, so you've got a larger body with an inlet and an outlet with a coalescing mesh inside that captures entrained air the little entrained air bubbles cling to the coalescing mesh they rise up in the barrel and go through the air vent right yeah they're vented to atmosphere exactly you you, you kind of hit it right there with the larger body what we find is that you know our air vent bodies can be three to four times bigger than the pipe connection size coming to them and that's so you get an instant velocity drop right i mean that wider body will reduce velocity up to about a 10 to 1 ratio. Right. Yeah, and that really allows that coalescing mesh to knock those micro bubbles loose from the water. So we have this coalescing mesh, and everybody does things a little different. Any idea what ours is made out of? Yeah, we have a glass-reinforced mesh in our smaller brass units, and then we have a stainless steel mesh in our larger units, our larger steel units. Right, that glass-reinforced nylon is in all of our brass units. Yeah. So... And some of our larger our larger ones do have the stainless steel. They get kind of confused. You know, we always get guys that they call in, they want a two inch model. It's really important to know flow rates, isn't it? That's that yeah, you, you hit it right there because we have a two inch model. You know what? We, we have, have a bunch of bunch two of two inch models. models. Um that yeah, size we, crosses over between flow rates. Right. Yeah. I mean we have a brass two inch model. You know, which is rated for lower flow rates up to about 37 gallons per minute. But then we have a two inch connection on a steel model uh, that has the larger body with the stainless steel mesh that's rated to 60 gallons per minute. Yeah. And that is a common, I don't know how many times we get that. It seems heating season, I bet I get that question twice a week. You know, it's interesting though, is that I usually get the question and it's misapplied mm-hmm. because, again, guys are you know, designing their piping and sizing their piping. And so they're picking and selecting components to go in that based on pipe size. Always on pipe size. That's a common mistake guys make. Yeah. And you really, when you're looking at sizing, 
you know, anything, a dirt, an air separator, dirt separator, hydraulic separator, you really need to know the flow rate of your system. Yeah. And it applies to plumbing stuff too. I mean, we're going to beat this like a dead horse, but it, it applies in plumbing with mixing valves a lot. We see it all the time. And like you said, with all these separators, right. knowing your flow rate is really going to save you a lot in time and money. Well, and uh, even bigger than that, this the product's going to work for you. You're going to get the best performance out of it. You got it. I mean, you take a two inch brass model, and I know we kind of pick that, and that's because that's the point where they kind of you can cross over from brass to steel. And you take a you know a two inch model rated at 37 GPM, and you know you have a boiler or a system that's 40 48 GPM. Yeah, you uh, have to you have to step to that bigger size. Yeah, if you don't, it's just not going to perform well for you. No, you're going to have a pressure drop in that, which is no good. Yeah. So, so when somebody picks out the right product, we have to talk to them about installation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, being a, a pass through device. I mean, does it always have to be on a horizontal pipe, Greg? We have options to install in a vertical pipe but they we only go so far in flow rate with those yeah those you know being on a vertical pipe you know you're not passing directly through the coalescing mesh in the body it's kind of like a side discharge so it will bypass the water off to the side through a coalescing mesh and then back into the vertical pipe and because of that you know the body's a little smaller the coalescing mesh is a little smaller it still does a great job of removing air but they're only good out to about 10 gallons per minute yeah so having one that's in line in in the main loop you know a larger one that's dedicated for the entire flow rate of the system is imperative right right yeah typically you'll have that on your on your hot side of the boiler you, know, you want to have that on the supply side coming out of the boiler and suction side of the pump. Right. So we want a high temperature, the highest temperature and the lowest pressure. And that's going to be the best for removing air out of the system. Right. Right. Yeah. They'll, um, they'll perform well for you. They're a multi-pass device, so they will get the majority of the air out in the first pass. Um, but being multi-pass, you know, it, it, the next couple passes after that, it will continue to remove air and and actually anytime the system's running, it's gonna if there's micro bubbles in there, it's gonna remove that. Right. And that's always a, a confusion with people too, is they, they get these and they they don't realize they are a multi pass and it, it can also be confused and, and misapplied in other applications. Yeah. Plumbing in particular. We right. Get that a lot. Yeah, we get that question a lot about an air separator for plumbing and you know, they're they're great for air removal. They're more for a closed system, so you're not going to put that into a plumbing plumbing right. application. Right. They are they are not low lead brass. They're not designed to be in what's called an open system. Right. Right. So putting those in, Greg. You know, I I often see the the fill and expansion tank hung below them. Yeah. So. Fill an expansion tank. This is always a hot topic, isn't it? We seem to get that yeah, question. Where should that be where located? Where should I go? Where, where can I put it in in this spot? Well, we always are going to tell you. I mean, this is best practice. You want your expansion tank installed in a point of no pressure change. So okay. you want you don't want to be pumping right at it. Right. You don't. Yeah. I mean, it actually will, won't perform well for you if you're it pumping won't into at it. All it won't. You'll lose you, pressure. Right. You're actually going to pump into it. You're going to preload the bladder, and then you just lost all your room for expansion. Right. So then you're going to have problems with with uh, pressure relief valves dripping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you will. Um, so, yeah, it's not uncommon because you want your air separator at the point of no pressure. To put the expansion tank and fill valve in below it is really common um, and we see that a lot on our brass applications, but when you get to the larger steel models, you'll, you're going to see a drain at the bottom of those, but is that is that where you're going to want to pipe that expansion tank? Typically not. Um, be, even though it's sold as an air separator, you're looking at a larger barrel device that has a void at the bottom where the potential for debris to build up, if you have a dirty system, it could happen. Right. So... We would hate to see someone put that on there. They want that as a purge point, you know, either to purge. Most of the time it's for purging debris. Mm-hmm. Um, 
some guys will use it even to, to purge a little air off if, if the system is, you know, completely empty. But honestly, those larger units, they're not using that, that to purge air. We have a skimmer valve that's actually probably about a third of the way down from the top. Right. And that's going to be your purge point for removing air. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, if you tie your expansion tank in down below that, because it is such a larger barrel and you have the coalescing mesh in there, you know, as it removes air, it is going to knock debris loose from the water like a dirt separator. I mean, and that will fall to the bottom. So if you pipe your expansion tank in there, you run the risk of getting dirt and debris in your expansion tank. Yeah, you get dirt and debris in your expansion tank. That's also going to, again, preload the bladder, and then you just lost room for right for expansion. Yeah, you sure did. What other application do you see these used in that doesn't get talked about very often? Chilled water. Chilled water. Yeah, we do. Actually, we do see those in chilled water. Yeah, I mean, we don't get a ton of questions about it, but not a big deal. It, it's something you got to think a little bit more about, but you're going to go and install this thing right on the inlet side going into the chiller most of the time. Right, so the hot side of the chiller, essentially, where you know you look at a boiler, you're putting it on the supply line coming out of the boiler where the water temperature is the hottest. With a chiller, you're going to reverse that, and you're going to have it on you know, the inlet side coming into the chiller where that water is the warmest. Yep, the most oxygenated water from, from getting heated up after all the, all the cool or all the, yeah, all the cold is absorbed out of, right. out of the water, out of sure. the chilled water. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, chilled water. You know, we're rated for use between thirty-two and two hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, we're going to cover either a chilled or hot water application. Excellent. So, we kind of touched on sizing a bit with that, but I think we could brush up on it a little more. So, whenever sizing one of these, no matter what it is, if it's again a dirt separator, air separator hydraulic separator, mixing valve, whatever it is, we always want to base that off of the the GPM flow rate. Right, and that's total GPM. I mean, you might have a multiple boiler application where, you know, say you have a hydraulic separator and you have a, you know, a header coming off of that and all, and you have two or three boilers tied into that. Um, You know, you might have, you know, three 200,000 BTU boilers, you know, so you're looking at 600,000 BTUs. Well, on an individual application, you're probably at a 20 degree delta T, you're going to be 20 GPM per boiler. Sure. But when you're sizing that separator, if you're putting it in the header pipe, you're going to need to figure for that total total load or 60 gallons per minute. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, you figure it out and, or if you're going off of what a lot of guys are doing, going off of the piping that exists, that kind of can bite you. I mean, it can and take you out of contention for getting a job right? because, you know, you're bidding the product that's much larger than maybe what you need. Or smaller. Or I mean, that might get you in trouble on a job because yeah. you look at a lot of these boilers and, I mean, you, you can have a, you know, a, a 200,000 BTU boiler coming out in one inch, coming out of the boiler. Right. I mean, that doesn't mean you're going to pipe one inch to it. That just means what it's, at, what it's leaving that heat exchanger at. Exactly. There's also other types, I guess, that, that are out there on the market. And, and we have to, we end up cross-referencing a few different types. And the biggest one is the tangential type. Yeah, yeah those are a very uh, high-velocity yeah. unit. It's, you're typically running at higher velocities to make a tangential work. Right. It's not a straight pass-through device. Your inlet and outlet are typically you know, coming in at different levels of the air separator, and it's designed to run as a high velocity or at a higher velocity. I right. You're looking at 8 to 10 feet per second on something like that versus a standard is right around 4 to, we'll say, 4 to 6. Right, right. Yeah, and with our bodies being so much larger – we're creating that instant velocity drop, so we don't have a pressure drop through ours. Right. Right. At four feet per second, eight feet per second, we're we're still looking in pretty good shape. Right. So when you're looking at servicing, are ours pretty easy to service? I think they're pretty easy to service. I mean, there's not much to it. We offer models with service check valves, like, for instance, on the brass ones on the 551 series. They come with check valves. So if you have to, you know, take something apart, 
you have that ability to just take it apart kind of on the fly and that'll that'll allow that 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 check valve will close right now not to say that you can't run into problems with if there's debris in that check valve then it'd cause a leak right so in a perfect world check valves work excellent yeah yeah they do and honestly they're great to have but if you want to go one step further in your install throw a ball valve in there absolutely isolation so that you can get in and clean it out if you need to i mean with all of our air vents um, they're designed to be serviceable. You can remove the cap and float, uh, clean the pin out if you have an issue there. Um, you can remove the vent assembly and clean that out. We actually have replacement vent assemblies, so you're not you're not limited to having to replace the whole unit. We sell replacement cap and floats so that you can you again right. you're not you're not you're not getting into a position where you know you have to just replace the whole unit. Exactly, and that's what's nice about them is. They are very serviceable. I mean, our all brass ones from from the one inch on up to, you know, the two inch in the 551 series, you can actually remove the entire, just the, the vent vent cap and, and float. You can take the entire vent off and actually access the coalescing mesh. You and, can pull that coalescing mesh right out and clean it. Yes. And just kind of inspect the body. And you can reassemble the whole thing and you're back in business right. again. Yeah, you know, it was interesting with that. You look at our, our uh, smaller coalescing meshes, the glass reinforced coalescing mesh. Um, the edges are really sharp on that unit. If you ever pull it out and you notice that, yeah, and that that sharpness is there to attract the the micro bubbles. They like small sharp edges right in the fluid. They they slow down and they they catch everything that's sharp. Right. Yep. It'll allow that to rise up and out of the body. Bigger models, the flange models, the steel body models, you got a very serviceable air vent again where you can get a cover and float or pull it apart and clean it. You can pull the vent out. We do not offer replacement mesh for those. No. I mean, it's very rare that one goes bad. I mean, you have to have a lot of problems with fluid quality. Right. And if, usually if that would want. be debris buildup as well. And It usually is. I you mean, know, the probably the one advantage with that larger steel body is that you know it has that big drain port at the bottom, so you can flush it off. You could actually pull the air vent assembly off the top, open the drain valve, and flush that coalescing mesh out if it if you had a really dirty system and you needed to clean that. You certainly could. The only thing you're not going to be able to fish out without taking the whole unit out of the piping is shop rags. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> We've had phone calls about those. Believe it or not, the mechanic had, you know, the welder had left a shop rag in there and and it's they have a, a major differential going across it they're not moving much water it's too water's hot going in but nothing not much going out yeah you're creating a big pressure drop yep. which One, is, you shouldn't you wouldn't normally see right we've covered some service we've covered uh sizing and, and installation how these things work how big of a unit do we make all the way up to a 12 inch unit it's pretty impressive. You look at our 12-inch unit, that thing is rated for 3,530 GPM. That's a lot That's of water. That's a big water. flow rate. That's huge. Think of 3,530 3, gallons per minute of flow. And that thing sits on its own feet. I mean, it's a big hunk of steel. Yeah, it is. Yeah, what, 8 through 12-inch are all on legs. They are on legs. You know, one thing to talk about is our smaller steel models, you know, probably I think it's the two through the six inch all have those eye hooks on the top. They do. And we get that question, hey, can I hang this unit off of those? Right. Can I put a cable in or something and hang off that eye hook? They're fine for being able to lift into place. But you got to remember once they're lifted into place and the system is filled with however many gallons of water these take, I mean, we've got the chart here. You're looking at an additional eight pounds per gallon, right? Yeah, and I mean they all they have you know pretty good internal capacity, so that's going to add a lot of weight to that system, right? You know the unit itself, uh, we'll say a two inch, just dry weight, it's thirty four pounds, but it can hold it can hold up to two gallons of water in it, so you added some weight to that. So, right. Yeah. So you're going to add some additional weight. So no, you're not going to want to hang off of those eye hooks. They're there for fabrication as a big part of it, fabrication and painting. And then also, 
you know, getting them hoisted into place, they're handy for that. But beyond that, that's not a mounting point. No, not not a mounting point at all. So if you got to build the trapeze to hold your your piping in place mm-hmm. when you're putting the flanges in or whatever it is, anything but right clevis hooks and threaded rod or something. Yep, you got it. Don't don't use those hooks on those eyelet hooks on top of the the separator to hang it. Well, you know, I think that's it on. On air separators, Greg, I think we covered the serviceability, the install, the the sizing. That sounds about right. I think we've got everything covered with these. Yeah. So what do you you want to come back and talk about next week? Next week, we're going to talk about dirt separation, magnetic and and dirt separation. I think that's a great topic. You know, we hit air vents and air removal. We'll come back with dirt separation and magnetic next week. Sounds good. All right. See you next week. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.